Hi guys, watch till the end and don't forget to subscribe our channel for more interesting lectures and videos in chemistry. Hi guys, welcome to our lecture series on stereochemistry. This series is uh, definitely going to be extremely helpful for college and university students. This is our first lecture in the series and I hope you enjoy the series. Before going on to the uh, main topic, uh, I would like to share with you guys uh, from where you can study these topics, where you can find them. So you can uh, go and get the Organic Chemistry book by Francis Carey, it's fourth edition. Uh, chapter 3, 5 and 7 will help you in this uh, understanding these topics. So most of these topics you can find in these chapters and you can also uh, read a uh, stereochemistry of organic compounds by Ernst Elio. It's a little advanced uh, script, uh, but still could be very helpful for you guys. So let's see how we can define stereochemistry. You know, these molecules, especially these organic molecules, they are three-dimensional in nature. So the atoms uh, present in a molecule, they are arranged uh, in a 3D space. And the study of the relative spatial arrangement of atoms in a molecule is known as stereochemistry. Or you can simply define it as the study of the three-dimensional structure of a molecule. And this study of the three-dimensional structure of a molecule involves two things. One, the skeleton, and second, its dynamics. So these molecules, they are always uh, moving. I say they are not dead, they are alive. And so those dynamics could also be studied with the help of stereochemistry. Before going deep into a topic, let's first see what is isomerism. Isomerism, most of you guys would already know, uh, is a phenomena in which two molecules have the same molecular formula, but they may have some differences in their structure or in the arrangement of the atoms in the molecule. So the molecular formula is same in all the cases, but they're different from each other, either structurally or in their stereochemistry. So generally, there are of two types of isomerism. One is structural isomerism and the other is what we call stereoisomerism. Structural isomerism is sometimes also known as constitutional isomerism. So it mostly deals with the structure of the molecule, while stereoisomerism deals with the arrangement of the groups in the three-dimensional space. So let's see uh, what structural isomerism means. So structural isomerism could be of different types, like chain isomerisms, positional isomerism, functional group isomerism, or even tautomerism. What is chain isomerism? Let's see this with the help of an example. For example, we have N-butane. N-butane, you know, has four carbon atoms in the structure, and it has 12 hydrogens. Sorry, it has 10 hydrogens. So the formula is C4H10. Now N-butane has four carbons in a chain. So the chain of carbon atoms uh, constitutes four carbon atoms and then there are hydrogens attached to each of the carbon atoms. On the other hand, if we have a molecule, for example, 2-methylpropane. So propane, you know, has three carbons in the chain 
and there is a CH3 group, a methyl group attached to carbon number 2 of this uh, 3 carbon chain or propane. It, now this molecule also has 4 carbons and 10 hydrogens. So the molecular formula of both n-butane and 2-methylpropane is the same, but the chains are different. The lengths of the chains are different. One has 4 carbons in the chain, the other has 3 carbons in the chain. Next is positional isomerism. Positional isomerism means that you have two molecules and both have the same functional group. For example, or they have the same uh, substituents in a chain. For example, you have an alcohol. Alcohol, you know, they have uh, hydroxyl groups in the structure. So, positional isomerism means that there will be two molecules having these hydroxyl groups at different positions in the molecule. For example, you have one propanol and two propanol. So we have a three carbon chain in one of these molecules. This OH group is attached to carbon number one. So the molecule becomes one propanol. And in the other, again, we have a three carbon chain. So the chain is the same. There are three carbons. But in this case, this OH group is attached to carbon number two. So it becomes two propanol. So the Chain is the same, there are three carbons, one OH group in both the uh, molecules, but the position of those OH groups is different. Next is functional group isomerism. So, in this case, we will have two molecules, again, with the same molecular formula, but they will have different functional groups. For example, a very famous example is that of uh, ethanol, C2H5OH, and another C2H5OH is that of, uh, the, the molecular formula uh, is that of dimethyl ether. So, in both cases, we have two carbons, six hydrogens, and one oxygen. So, but ethanol has a hydroxyl functional group. It's an alcohol, while dimethyl ether has an ether functional group. It's an ether, right? So the molecular formula is the same, but the functional groups are different. Then we can have uh, tautomers or tautomerism, uh, again, is a type of isomerism. And again, a very famous example is that of ketoenol tautomers. So you can have a keto form of a molecule or an enol form of a molecule that we will discuss in detail later on uh, and you will see that the molecular formula is the same but one isomer has a ketone functional group and the other has an enol functional group and that is why they are tautomers of each other and they are interconvertible now we come to our main type of uh, isomerism that uh, we will be discussing through the course of uh, this series and that is stereoisomerism. So stereoisomerism is broadly divided into two types uh, that is conformational isomerism or stereoisomerism and configurational stereoisomerism. We will discuss each of them uh, in detail later on but uh, just to tell you that conformational uh, isomers are interconvertible into each other just by rotation around a single bond. So it does not require any bond breaking. It just is the rotation around carbon-carbon single bond that converts one conformational stereoisomer into another conformational stereoisomer. On the other hand, Configurational isomers are interconvertible only if bond breaking is involved in the process. So configurational isomers cannot be interconverted into each other just by rotation around a carbon-carbon single bond. 
but this type of isomers, isomerism will require bond breaking and consequently reformation of that bond to uh, give rise to another configurational isomer. Now this configurational isomers or isomerism is again uh, can be subclassified into two types. One is known as geometric isomerism or geometrical isomerism and the other is known as optical isomerism. We will discuss each of them in detail later on. Now, what are stereoisomers? How can we define stereoisomers? So, different molecules having the same molecular formula, again, that is a constant, so they should have the same molecular formula, but different arrangement of atoms or groups of atoms in space, in a 3D space, are known as stereoisomers. So these stereoisomers, they differ from each other only in the way these atoms are oriented in the three-dimensional space. So they should have the same functional groups and for that reason, they will have identical IUPAC names. Of course, the molecular formula will be similar, but in this case, they will also have the same IUPAC names because they have the same functional groups. The functional groups are the same, the molecular formula is the same and because of that the IUPAC names are the same. But it is only the different orientation of these atoms in the three-dimensional space that differentiates between two stereoisomers. Now, these are minor differences in the three-dimensional structure of a molecule but these differences are enough to differentiate between them in terms of their properties so their physical properties or even their chemical properties may be different in most of the cases so this is how we can define uh, stereoisomers and uh, how they differ from each other um, uh, when we talk about them in terms of their stereochemistry. So this is all about uh, stereoisomers for today. Uh, we'll discuss in more detail some other topics in the next lecture. Thank you very much.